People have been smoking marijuana for at least 2,500 years. As a physician, I don't recommend people smoke anything, and I recommend using vaporization as the preferred way of inhaling. So let's talk about it. Hey everybody, it's Dr. David. I'm a board certified pediatrician and cannabis doctor in Tampa, Florida. Now, while most people think about marijuana, medical marijuana, etc., they think about smoking it. It's certainly the way that historically it has been done. Um, it's only till recently that other things, obviously things like edibles weren't available thousands of years ago, let alone batteries that would make a vape cartridge work. Um, and so that historically has been the way that it's been done. But we're going to be talking about today. Um, how the medical cannabis has turned itself into an oil, the different types of vape cartridges that there are, that there are different types of extraction methods, as well as different types of vape oils. Okay. Now, in terms of the vape cartridges itself, you will typically see three different times, three different things. One of them you'll see, and, and pretty much most of them just look like a regular pen. Um, some of them have the oil and the battery all together, and it's kind of considered a single use or a, a disposable type of thing. You use it, you throw it away. Okay. Those usually do have um, cheaper versions of the oils in there, but they are also the least expensive usually way of getting if a person wants to use medical marijuana and inhale it. Um, there are what are called 510 threads. So for each of the, the, you'll see cartridges and kind of like a pen touch, you'll see like that there'll be, um, it actually kind of like screws off. Okay. And then there'll be like a, a cartridge. And so this would actually be, if, if you can imagine what a vape cartridge looks like, this would be what, what contains the oil. And then there would be the pen itself that would have a battery in it. And usually there's either a button that you push in to activate it, but sometimes the act of inhaling it alone um, causes the heating to happen. If there's no heating of the oil, as it won't turn into a vape vaporizer, nothing will be inhaled. Now, in addition to that, there are some dispensaries who have what are called proprietary pods. So instead of it looking like a pen, they'll have different things. Sometimes they look like a little cube, similar to like what a... um what a jewel would look like, how there's like its own type of battery, etc. cetera. Um, the reason why this is done is a few fold. Number one, because it's proprietary. If they, if you like it, they can get you to buy it because you can't buy it from other people because usually different dispensaries have different types of pods. Um, also they, they say that the heating element, the, um, the temperature being steady throughout the inhalation, throughout the cartridge itself, um, they claim is better as well. I'm not so sure about that, but that's what they claim. But I haven't really seen any proof about that. But those are the really the three main, when people go to a medical cannabis dispensary, those are the typical three types of cartridges that you'll see out there. Okay, now the question then becomes, um, how do they get from a plant to an oil? Right. There's obviously some process involved with that. You're not just going to squeeze it out. So um, there, and so there are two main um, ways of doing what are used. There are methods that involve solvents and they're the ones that are considered solventless. Now, solvents themselves, they are used to break down and dissolve the plant material so that the active ingredients, which are found in what are called the trichomes of the buds, that's where you'll find the THC or CBD, other minor cannabinoids. That's where you will find the different terpenes or within these trichomes. It's not in the stem. It's not in the leaf. I guess there's small amounts, but really the active and when, when people are trying to um, use it for medical purposes, they're, they're accessing that which is within the, the buds that are in these trichomes. Okay. Now, when a person used these different solvents and again, it allows them to access the, the cannabinoids, the terpenes. There are other phytochemicals like bioflavonoids and things that are in the, um, in the cannabis as well that also can be accessed through the process. And there are different types of solvent agents that are used. The most common being alcohol, which ethanol butane and carbon dioxide. Um, some of them like alcohol and butane, there is more of a, um, a, a burning risk of explosion risk. Obviously so those things are explosive, Carbon dioxide is not, not is not part of that, um, and it's being used up. So um, a lot of you'll see more more often you know, nowadays. You'll see a lot of carbon dioxide extractions as opposed to the solvents, but the solvents are definitely still out there. Now, in terms of you know the good companies that are out there, so I know in Florida medical cannabis dispensaries, I can't speak to how things are in every other state, but I do know that we do a very good job here. And the dispensaries, they make sure that none of those solvents end up in the final product. So when the when the companies are ready to, before they sell it, they do what's called a third party testing, and there's produce a certificate of analysis that not just shows the cannabinoids, not just shows the terpenes, but also the other things that are in there, be it pesticides, hopefully not heavy metals, hopefully 
probably not, but also if there's any solvents that are left over. Okay. Now, um, the issue though is that um, when this, what they do is they'll actually using heat and other methods will remove this, will remove those solvents in order to make this the concentrate. But the thing is, is that when a lot of people buy street products, we have no idea where to get any from. You have no idea if there's any of those solvents that are in there, let alone all of those other toxins that I was just talking about. Now, um, as far as the, the – and the, there are these different types of extraction methods, which can impact um, the, the overall process alone, but also even the quality of the overall final products, the how it may feel going down, how it may taste going down, etc. Now, in terms of the vape oils that are found in cartridges, there are – you may be aware that there's other things like that are um, called dabs where, the, where there's like some goo or a little shattered um, substance, etc. That's not what we're talking about. Today, we're specifically talking about what goes into a vape cartridge, okay? And probably the most long longest uses what's called a distillate. So what happens here is that the buds themselves are dried and cured. Um, then this, a solvent is used to extract the oil, but the, there's a distillate, a distillation apparatus that heats that cannabis oil up to a specific temperature. And that allows the particular cannabinoid or terpene to be, to kind of fall out and therefore it can be captured. So it's able to isolate a particular cannabinoid, most commonly, obviously being THC. Um, but so it's it's a purified form with that. Now there there will, a lot of times what you'll see at the dispensaries with the distillates is that they'll add terpenes back to it. Sometimes from cannabis, sometimes that are from other plants, etc. In order to give so like when you hear about a distillate that's a sativa or an indica, that's because they're adding terpenes into it that would match what a particular sativa or indica strain would would show. But it's not actually all coming from that same plant together. Um, but um, as a, a result of this, um, you know, they can have different blends. They can make any kind of blend that they want with that. But again, it's not a natural strain. Um, but again, they can mimic it. Now, another way that you'll hear by doing this, one of the more newer ways is what's called a live resin. Not rosin. We'll get to that in a minute. Resin. Okay. This is also known as butane hash oil. Okay, and it usually does have a very strong flavor and scent, similar to the way that hashish does. Um, and what they do is they flash freeze the buds. Um, and they say that by doing that, that preserves the freshness of the plant, which I guess is true. Same with fish and everything else. Um, and then a solvent is used, usually again, butane, to, um, for the extraction of, of that. And then that's um, how they then concentrate it. But it's he heavy in terps usually. Um, and it's just a method that makes it much stronger than a lot of the others. And then my um, another version, which I particularly like because it's, it's without any solvents at all, is called live rosin. Okay. And what live rosin, what they do is they take the fresh buds, they free, again, they're frozen, but instead of adding any chemicals to it whatsoever, what they're doing is I kind of use the analogy of a, gi a giant panini press, okay, where there's both heat as well as pressure. And to imagine like a filter, like a cheesecloth on the bottom. So if the buds are put here, and then this heat and pressure pushes it out. It's so much heat and so much pressure that it basically breaks open those trichomes, breaks open the, the, the buds, and then an oil is then oozing out that is collected while the plant material is kept on top. So it's just heat and pressure, no chemicals. And what's coming through is the purity of the cannabinoids and the terpenes in the way that it is in the plant itself. So that usually is going to be a specific strain itself and not something that's concocted, put back together. And uh, a lot of people also find that live rosins are maybe the easiest on the breath, least likely to cause irritation. Of course, the higher the temperature that you vape is going to be more irritating. But also more people do tend to find it to be not as irritating um, as some of the other forms. Okay, so now you learned something about the different types. There, I, there, I know that there's some new versions that are coming out there, um, etc. I'm sure there'll be new ways of coming up with it um, over time, um, and that's also ways that are typically more expensive because it's something new or proprietary. Um, now, I have made additional videos on medical cannabis, including why I recommend um, vaping versus smoking in the first place, other ways of using cannabis. So continue to check out our our our, uh, our videos on this topic because there's a lot of information out there. We're trying to educate you, and of course, um, if you you like what you hear please subscribe to um, and become a member of our um, patreon um, we really appreciate our support there where people have access to my holistic primary care protocols and other documents and videos that are not made public um, and of course um, holistic pediatrics and family care that's the name of my practice you get all the information holistic relief is the medical cannabis dr david md helps um, me allow to help people outside of the state who want medical education consultations too so there you go have a great day